for my next section, I'm going to talk about the role of analytics in retention programs and and the, and, and what analytics can do to help marketing organizations. Uh, uh, analytics can answer some very fundamental questions uh, for marketing uh, organizations. They can maximize revenues. Um, and, and the, the maximization of revenue part is, is pretty straightforward. They can help you identify new, new prospects. They can help you increase response rates. They can uh, identify cross-sell and upsell opportunities and help you increase uh, order value. And they help you retain customers by identifying and reacting to signs of uh, attrition. They can also help you manage costs. Uh, they can help you lower the cost uh, by identifying and targeting only those customers that are likely to buy. Um, they will help you maximize resources by aligning your sales and marketing objectives on these most profitable uh, customers. Um, they'll lower your marketing reactivation costs uh, by reducing your target sets. If you're mailing fewer customers, you're naturally spending less. Uh, and they'll help you identify and eliminate unprofitable customers. Um, finally, they'll help you manage compliance. They'll help you lower the customer fatigue. They'll help you respect and comply with customer preferences. And, and analytics can help you identify and validate the, the highest risk uh, customers and, and put in place very targeted plans to, to managing these people. So when you think about applying predictive analytics, there was a, there was a, a very traditional approach uh, to applying predictive analytics. You could segment and profile your customers uh, to understand behavioral drivers uh, you, using clustering algorithms. You could build propensity models uh, to improve performance of campaigns. These are very classic response models that many, many direct marketers do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you could predict demand and, and target your best customers and optimize your channel strategies. This is very much focused on demand prediction. Um, and you can also reduce customer churn uh, by doing some churn analysis. But there's increasingly an emerging best practice, which, which really focuses on improving the retention and cross-sell program performance by, by doing two things, uh, by fundamentally reducing costs uh, and targeting customers whose behavior you can, you can actually change. So you are, you are not necessarily going after customers whose behavior you can't change, even if they're at a high likelihood to uh, at right and to churn. So this is uh, the core concept that, uh, that drives uh, uh, uplift analysis. And, and really it starts by recognizing that not all customers are, are made equal. Um, the CFO magazine earlier this, this month had uh, 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 an article introducing uh, segmentation and introducing targeting to the CFO organization and, and talks about playing favorites. And really the, 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 the theory here is that um, the bottom 20% of customers can drain profits by at least 80%, while the top 20% can generate 160% of the company's profit. And so um, it advocates studying the upper crust and delicately breaking um, customers into micro-segments that share the same needs. I am going to, in uh, a subsequent slides, going to share with you a case study about one company that did just that. It micro-targeted and micro-segmented their most valuable customers and categorized them by their behaviors. Uh, using these precision targeting methods, um, they generated profits in excess of any incremental cost. And, and uh, so this is fundamentally um, a recognition that marketers need to come to, that we cannot control, we cannot treat all customers as equal. We need to understand how they react to marketing intervention and we need to use that understanding to drive our marketing program. So, which really brings me to the next topic um, around uplift modeling and using uplift modeling uh, for optimizing program performance. So, when you think about uplift modeling, it's, it's important to put a definition around uplift modeling, and we at Forrester will define uplift modeling as an analytical technique that models the difference in behavior between target and control groups not just the behavior of the target group. So let me be explicit about this. Uh, traditional uh, uh, analytical approaches uh, will essentially say, will essentially focus on predicting the likelihood of a customer to perform a specific action. Uh, this action might be uh, buying a product, or this action might be churn. Um, 
In contrast, what uplift modeling will do is they'll focus on predicting the change in likelihood to, to conduct the same action. So, so when you, when you, when you think about uplift modeling, I think it's important to recognize there are some very fundamental concepts, fundamental concepts that uh, apply to uplift modeling. Uh, first, not all customers have the same response to a marketing action. Some customers may buy a product based on a message, while others might completely ignore the message in the copy. Uh, they might even neg the react negatively uh, to a message that you send. Um, identifying how um, a, a consumer is likely to respond uh, to a campaign will help uh, marketers narrow the target population. Second uh, fundamental concept about Apple's modeling is that retention efforts should focus on positive responders only. Um, there's no point in trying to retain customers whose minds are made up. Essentially, you're adding marketing harm to the equation. Uh, marketers who target all types of respondents, not just uh, the positives, will just waste valuable resources on indifferent customers. Um, they might even trigger churn. And, and this is critical in a, in, in a climate where marketing budgets are under a great deal of scrutiny. Um, and, and all of you are under pressure to reduce marketing spend. Um, and the third uh, concept is really that um, uplift modeling helps you model the uplift in outcomes, not just the outcome. Um, so by modeling the uplift in outcomes, you can understand how a target consumer's behavior is likely to change uh, by the by the marketing intervention. Um, it also will help you identify the people that are most affected by this marketing intervention. Um, are they are they affected positively or are they affected negatively? So when you think about